Hi everyone, this is Kaveh Hosseini and I'll be talking about the next oral demo for resilient functions against polynomials. Um, this is a joint work with Ishan Chattopetye, Puya Hatemi, Shahar Lovett, and David Zuckerman. So I'll be started with I'll be starting with a motivation, then I'll discuss the main result and proof ideas, and then I'll conclude with a summary. Okay, so let me start with a definition. Let's say you have two functions f and g so that the output is minus one and one. You can define the correlation between this f and g to be just the absolute value of the inner product between f and g. So this is going to be a number between zero and one. And now let's say you have a family f of functions so you can define the correlation of g with the whole family f to be maximum over all members of the family when you take the correlation. So now a basic problem is to construct an explicit function g so that it has small correlation with your family. In other words, with every element in your family. In other words, you want to construct a g that is average case for your family of functions. Note that a random g would work with a counting argument and uh, as long as the size of the family is not too big. So the family that we'll be working with in this talk is the family of polynomials of degree at most d. And that's polynomials over f2 to the n. That's n variable polynomials. Each variable is 0 or 1, and the output is 0 or 1. So we want to make it a, zero, a minus 1, 1 output function. So I have to take minus 1 to the power p. So this will be the family that we work with, poly d. OK, so let me now describe some motivations for this basic problem. Again, the problem is explicitly, uh, explicitly construct, constructing a G that has small correlation with all degree D polynomials. So one basic application follows from this general framework of Nissan and Wigerson, who show that how to construct a pseudo random generator for a family based on an average case hard function for the family. And pseudo random generators have various applications in many areas. Um, the other motivation is to construct circle lower bounds, and this follows from the famous result of Rathbarf and Smolensky, who show that low degree low depth circuits can be approximated by low degree polynomials. So this opens a method to construct circle lower bounds based on correlation bounds. Um, and the third motivation is from this new line of research to construct pseudo random generators um, based on the Fourier structure of the function family. But so I'll be skipping this for now. I'll discuss this later on. But for now, let's just see what are some known results about correlation bounds against degree D polynomials. So basically, you can divide the results into two parts of small degree regime and large degree regime. In the small degree regime, we have very many results that show something of this form that there is some g that has correlation of the form to the minus n over two to the d and the problem with this is that as long as d goes beyond log n this doesn't give really anything useful so that's why it's called small degree regime uh, in the large degree regime there is a celebrated result of Rasbarf and smolensky who show that a correlation of majority the specific function majority with degree D polynomials is of the form D over square root N. And this is also shown recently to be tight actually. Um, another result is very recently the result of Viola which shows that there is a function G in X to NP that has correlation of the form D over N for infinitely many N. And notice that this N cannot be improved. So this form of bound is tight. Um, another known result is with this framework of XOR lemmas. So let me just quickly first explain what an XOR lemma is, and then I'll des describe what's known about XOR lemma. Um, so let's say you have a function g that's defined on f to the n. Again, out was minus 1 and 1. We can define g x or g, or let's call it g to the x or 2, it's a function that's defined on f to the n times f2 to the n, and it's defined in this way. So I have two inputs, each of them has our length n 
minus one length n zero one input and the result is this product of uh, the two values. Similarly, you can define g the k wise xor of g to be a function that has k inputs of length n. So an example to have in mind for this talk is um, the majority function. So majority x or majority is defined in this way. We'll be using this a lot. Okay, so what is an XOR lemma? So the basic template for an XOR lemma is that you start out with a function G that has some correlation. You have an upper bound epsilon on the correlation with degree D polynomials. And then you want to iterate this, obtain the KWAS XOR of G and hopefully get a much stronger bound for the correlation with poly D. And so ideally you want epsilon K to be like something like epsilon K to the power K. Um, okay, so there is one XOR lemma known in the literature due to Viola and Wigderson, who show that if you start out with this weak assumption of G being less than having this correlation, then the KY's XOR has this correlation. So notice that in the denominator we have this 2 to the D bound, 2 to the D factor. So there are a few issues with this result. One is that it's not really useful if k is small or d is large. And uh, another issue is that, so the, the, this work is based on the Gower's norm. And so it uses two facts. Basically, this is the d plus one Gower's norm of g, and it's shown to be upper bounding correlation of g with poly d. And also, the next fact is that Gower's norm is multiplicative with XOR. So putting these two together, we get a bound, a way to bound the correlation of G with poly D, an XOR lemma. Uh, but the problem with this is it doesn't, even if D is very small, let's say D is just one, it doesn't really produce, the whole approach doesn't improve, produce good bound. So for example, let's just take majority. So one can compute that the second Gower's norm of majority is one over n to the one fourth, but we know that it, based on rasbar smolinski obviously this has to be one over square root n correlation with poly D. So even if you consider D1 and iterate this, this doesn't produce good bounds. Okay, so now let me go back to the third motivation that I skipped for our result. So it follows, again, okay, let's remember that rasbar smolenskys bound is giving bound of D over square root N. Now, the next question is, what is an upper bound for majority X or majority with poly D? Can we get something that's much stronger than D over square root N? And it turns out that this question has some tight connection to construction of pseudo-random generators that is following some line of research that was initiated in this reference. And uh, so the second reference in particular has this particular conjecture about structure of degree D polynomials. Um, so we want to say the sum of Fourier coefficients of Hamming weight two exactly is upper bounded by this number. And it was shown in the in this second reference that if this conjecture is true, then one can obtain pseudo-random generators with polylogarithmic seed length for degree D polynomials. Um, now it turns out that answering this question is quite related to answering this question. So why is that? In this reference, it was shown that the classic rasbar smolensky bound can be used to, to show this bound on this first level Fourier coefficients. And in the current work, we show that similar thing happens for level two Fourier coefficients. So the correlation of majority X or majority, if one can have a bound of this form, 
then this would imply that the second level for a coefficients, the sum will be upper bounded by this number. However, there is this, this distinction that we look at the absolute value outside of the sum. But remember that for the PRG application, we really need the absolute value to be inside the sum. Um, however, this could be seen as like a first step towards answering this question. Okay, we do not have this bound, but we have a, another bound that has worse dependency on D. But I'll describe this later. Okay, so what is our main result? Again, one of the special goals is to obtain a good correlation bound for majority X or majority. So the main result, one of the special cases of the main result is that actually we get this correlation fee having dependence worse on with D, so it's too deep to the T, but it has the right dependency on N. And we also show that the K wise X or majority has an upper bound of this form. So I'm using this notation as like O notation. Um, okay, so the result we have is even more general. It's not just about majority, it's about all resilient functions. So let me just quickly describe what a resilient function is and then I'll explain the main result. Um, so let's say you have a function, zero one valued function, and it's called R to be R strongly resilient if you pick any set of coordinates of size at most R with high probability for ev for or like for most restrictions of the values outside of this set S of coordinates, the restricted function is a constant. Okay, and the probability should increase as s decreases the size of s so let's see an example majority is a good resilient function in the following sense if you look at any set of coordinates that has size at most say square root n then for most of restrictions of variables outside of this s this this restricted function is is already it's already fixed so by most also i mean one minus s divided by square root n so basically um majority is a square root n strong resilient function in other words one way other way of looking at this is like any small group of coordinates cannot really typically change the outcome of the function okay so Again, this is a definition of resilience. Now the main result we have is that if you have a R strongly resilient function, then we get an XOR lemma of, the, of this form. So notice that the dependency on R is correct and the dependency on K is also ideal, but we have a poor dependency on D um, and we conjecture that this also has to be of the shape poly D. I'm ignoring some logarithmic factors again here, but, but this is the shape of the bound that we get. Um, okay, so in order to prove this result, we have one main technical lemma that is about structure of degree D polynomials. So let me introduce that structural result and then we'll discuss a a little bit about the proof. So we follow, to discuss this structural result, I have to introduce this concept of local correlation. So let's say you have a function that's real valued, it's again defined on f to the n, and we have a set of coordinates. The s local correlation of f is the smallest epsilon, so that for most fixings of variables outside of s, the expectation of the restricted function is close to the global expectation. Okay, so the smaller local correlation, we the more for more restrictions we have, the expectations are close to each other. Uh, so let's just see a few examples. 
So one example is, let's say we have parity. So this is parity, the minus one, one version of the function is this, minus one to the f, okay. So the claim is the one local correlation of parity is zero. So why is that? Because let's say you fix all variables outside of f to anything you want, outside of the x1 to be anything you want, um, then the resulting function is either x1 or x1 plus 1. In both cases, the expectation of the, this restricted function is zero, which is the same as the global expectation. So, and that's true for every restriction. So we can just say we can take epsilon to be zero. Um, another example that's slightly more difficult is um, a quadratic. So let's say you have this specific quadratic and we define the minus one one version to be this. And uh, let's say you pick this particular set S. So it's just set of all odd indices of variables. Now pick any restriction for the variables outside, which means even variables, fix them to any value. The restricted function is going to be a linear function. It's going to be some parity function. So the expectation is going to be zero for every such restriction. But now what is the expectation of the actual original function, the quadratic? Well, you we can see that the expectation of that is two to the minus r. So um, this means that we can just take this two to the minus r to be the epsilon, to be the local correlation. Um, okay, so what was another observation is that this is actually true for all quadratics. So we fix an epsilon and um, pick an arbitrary quadratic, then the claim is there is a set of coordinates so that it's small, it's only logarithmic in one over epsilon, and it satisfies this condition that for most of fixing the variables outside of S, the expectation of restricted function is close to the global expectation. Okay, so now let me explain this lemma that was proved in Lovett, Mukopadi, and Spilka, that's generalizing this observation about quadratics to all degree D polynomials. So let's say you fix an epsilon and you have a degree D polynomial, the claim is there is a set S that has small size, it has, you have this bound on the size, and for most of the fixings, for at least one minus epsilon fraction of restriction, fixing of the variables outside of, outside of S, we know that this restricted function is, has the same, has a similar expectation to the global expectation. Um, and the main result that we have is that we improve this bound, this dependency, on epsilon to be the correct dependency, which is logarithmic on one over epsilon. So we have a bad dependency on D, but the dependency on epsilon is logarithmic, and that's crucial for our application because we really need to take epsilon to be one over poly n. So um, that's, yeah, obtaining this change of dependency to be correct on epsilon is and we, however, we conjecture that actually this dependency on D also should be just poly D. So this is a conjecture. That in this lemma, one can take size of S to be upper bounded by this number. Okay, so now let me briefly explain how can one get go from this structured result to this correlation bound that, and this XOR lemma that I explained. So as a first step, let's just recover this Rasgrove-Smolensky bound for majority, but in the low degree regime. So we have a bad dependency on D. So let's say we have a polynomial and it's degree D and D is small. And the goal is to prove that majority has a small correlation with D. So I'm, this is going to be more of an intuitive argument. So, and it's rather straightforward. So you can fill in the gaps by the same. So let's say also for simplicity that the function, that this polynomial that I have is has expectation zero or close to zero. So here's the proof idea. I mean, you use this structure result to say that there is a small set 
so that for most of fixings, we know that the restricted function has a similar expectation to the global function. But this global, but the global expectation was close to zero, so this expectation will be close to zero. But on the other hand, we know that the majority is a resilient function, which means that for all sets that are small, in particular for this particular set that we had here, we know that the um, restricted function most of the time is going to be constant. So putting these two together, if you fix a row, most of the time it's going to happen that expectation of p sub p restricted to a row is close to zero, but majority is constant, which means these two together have correlation close to zero. And this is true for most rows. So overall, we should have a small correlation with p. So this recovers. This type of argument recovers Rasbar Smolensky with a bad dependency, with a double exponential dependency on D. Um, okay, so now let's see how can we get the XOR lemma from this structure result. So the idea is also similar. Um, now let's say we have a polynomial P that now has two N variables. So I have two sets of variables of size N each, and I want to show that the correlation of majority XOR majority is small. With P. So the proof idea is that let's just write down what the correlation is. It's exactly this. So I'm writing it in terms of just a simple majority function. Now we can separate this part and think of this as a function of x now. Okay, so let's just call this f of x. Now this is basically I'm looking at a correlation of this f with majority. So I can try to follow the same approach as before. I want to say that there is a small set s of coordinates so that for most fixing of variables, expectation of f sub rho, this is rho, is close to expectation of f. But the problem is this is not a polynomial, so like I cannot apply my structure result directly to this because this is a real valid function. And uh, so the idea is that, okay, but it's not, but it's an average of a bunch of polynomials because for every fixed y, this is a polynomial of degree d. So we can try to estimate this value by just sampling a few of them. So you can pick a random subspace that is small and prove that this sampling works and then generalize the structure result to work for it. To average of a bunch of polynomials. Um, okay, so now the the missing part is how to prove this structure result. So again, the goal is let's say we have fixed an epsilon, and to not worry about the degree, let's just say also degree is also a constant. We have a polynomial of the bounded degree. And the goal is to say there is a set of coordinates that has size rather small. It's polylogarithmic on epsilon, which is the right shape of um, bound that we want to find on S. So that there, for most of fixing the variables outside of S, this expectation is close to the global expectation. Okay, so the idea is that a, we have a structure versus random, randomness dichotomy, and we also do induction on D. So the idea is basic idea is as follows. We, uh, we separate two cases. So one case is the polynomial that we start with is pseudo random in the sense that it's all of four, that all of its Fourier coefficients are small. And by small, I mean it's just like poly epsilon. So in this case, we show that we can actually estimate S local correlation of P by just taking a bunch of random derivatives and taking, looking at the S local correlation of the derivatives of P. But derivatives of P have degree one less, so we can uh, use induction hypothesis to handle those derivatives. But we have to take care of all of the derivatives simultaneously, obviously. The structured case is that, uh, there, say there is one large co Fourier coefficient. In particular, let's just say for simply is that the bias of the polynomial, the, the expectation of the polynomial is bigger than epsilon, epsilon prime. 
Then in this case, we show in this structure case, we can actually write the function, we can estimate the, the polynomial P as sum of a few degree D minus one polynomials with some real coefficients. And we also have to show that these coefficients are not too large. But here also in this case, we can follow the induction hypothesis and because these are all degree D minus one, so we can uh, use induction hypothesis. But the thing is, again, we have polylog epsilon minus one, many of these QI. So we have to simultaneously take care of all of these polynomials. Okay, so here's for a brief description of the proof. Now I'll just summarize what I said. The first thing is we prove the structural result for polynomials over f to the n. We show that if you have a degree at most d polynomial, then there is a small set that has the correct dependency on epsilon, the size, but it has this dependency on d, so that for most restriction, restrictions of values outside of s, we get this restricted function has expectation to, close to the global expectation. And we prove, we conjecture that actually this dependency on D also should be polynomial. And then we use this result to prove an XOR lemma for resilient functions, in the sense that if you have a function that strong, are strongly resilient, then we get this XOR lemma for the k-wise XOR of F is upper bounded by this number, where R is the resilience parameter, which was square root n for majority. So in particular, we get, we recover Rasborough Smolensky bound with a bad de dependency on D because the correct bound is just D instead of a double exponential on D. Um, and uh, we get, for example, also majority X or majority is upper bounded by this number. It has the correct dependency on N, but bad dependency on D. And we conjecture that this dependency on D also can be, again, proved to be poly D, which would follow if this the above conjecture was true. And uh, also we implicitly prove this bound using this correlation with majority X or majority. So this was one of the motivations to prove an upper to prove an upper bound on sum of Hamiway two four a coefficients of a degree d polynomial. Um, so we use this, this correlation bound to obtain this bound. Um, and uh, however, we, we really the conjecture that's useful and has sort of and general applications. We need it. We need the absolute values to be inside of the summation. Um, but this is all we can handle using only a correlation with majority. Um, okay, yeah, that was it. Thank you.